I never thought that I could look at myself at 16 and say, hey man, like you are hacking and making a living from me. It's like 30 to 50,000 people in Vegas, all a bunch of nerds, hackers, black jeans, black t-shirts. It's a select number of people that get invited to this. You have people coming from Europe, North America, South America, you name it. 20 years ago, they would have to have committed crimes to like learn these systems and now they don't have to do that anymore. So it's keeping all the nerds out of jail and it's getting them a good paycheck, so it's smart. Previously, a team of nine of us cleared 750K in a weekend. It's, it's colossal sometimes. A lot of my friends go gamble, like a lot of the bug bounty money they make. We'll be like, hey, are you up or down? And they'll be like, oh, we're down 4K, but it's a great time, right? <laughs> you start to believe that the bug will pop. You envision the vulnerability. I have like multiple messages from him saying I'm actually cosmic. To own a system is to have like total control, like full everything. Finally, you get that one string that's the correct one. And you're like, yeah, I got it. That whole experience is amazing. And that's what keeps me going back and back and back again. It's fascinating. It's the secret underground everyone thinks of. The week of Black Hat, B-Sides Las Vegas, and DEF CON is called the Hacker Summer Camp. When that comes together and the entire city is taken over by people like this, it's hilarious because you see people here just for Vegas. You see a bunch of people in all black in the 100 degree heat and they're like, what's going on? It's a very welcoming community. Anybody is welcome to have their own community, their own meetups, their own hangouts, and everybody from every background is accepted into those. For our case with the Bug Bounty Hunters, it's a next level thing because we're not just coming together to hang out. We're actually hacking a real company, right? You know, you have T-Mobile doing an event here and you have TikTok, you have Epic Games, and they're all paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, within a span of 72 hours. So my name is Vico. Uh, I also go by Spectres. So what I like to think about bug bounty is that it's very similar to uh, Wild West style bounties. You know what I mean? Where like you have like a, a hunter going like hunt for a person and they go and like retrieve that thing, that objective. There you are, thousand dollars. So historically, you used to have to commit crimes in order to learn things about systems that were black box, like enclosed and stuff. Uh, and I believe Facebook is actually kind of where the modern bug bounty program kind of evolved from. It basically allows you to do real world exercises against like an actual target, a company, uh, an asset, and uh, you get paid based on the bugs that you find. And there's different types of like bug bounty hunters and shit. I think web is like the most popular. Uh, hardware and embedded is probably like the second. And then you have specific subsections of that in those two categories. Uh, so like for hardware, you'll have car hacking, you'll have 5G hack, cell phone hacking, iOS. And then for like the web hacking side, you know, you have web hackers, you have like web green hackers, people that specialize in game hacking or application security code and review, things of that nature. Bug Bounty is a place where you can take anyone on the internet who has some sort of unconventional skills with security and allow them to help out in a way that's safe and has real impact. While a lot of times we find directly talking to vendors out there with issues can be dangerous for the researchers, uh, threats of lawsuits, lots of paperwork and legal. Bug bounty companies allow people to sign up for their platform. So companies come to them and say, we have these products, we wanna make sure they're secure. The bug bounty company goes and kind of casts a net out. They say, you know, anyone with these skills, we can promise you if you stick with X, Y, Z rules, we'll keep you safe. You know, you're, it's all good legally, but you're allowed to kind of hack on these programs, and then whatever you find, you're rewarded for. On the black market, you could definitely get paid more for a lot of these bugs. Like, major benefit is that there's a, what's called a safe harbor rule, where like any of the research that you're conducting, as long as it's being done in good faith, uh, you will not get prosecuted for it. So it's keeping all the nerds out of jail, and it's getting them a good paycheck, so it's smart.
I, I really wanted to do like a professional skateboard career. And I was like homeless at the time. So it was like, oh, you know, uh, I gotta make money somehow. And skateboarding's not working out <laughs> for sure. And I took a mega bus up to Michigan. I learned how to hack cars there. People were like, oh, you like hack cars and shit? Like what else have you to hack? I'll be like, oh yeah, I'd like, I hack satellites can do like boats, spray. There's like a bunch of different targets to hack. I mostly go for like whatever the interesting target is. When I was really little, my dad would bring me with him to IT centers. My first memory is looking at a uh, tape drive sorting robot. But I was exposed to that very young. Started loving that, met a bunch of friends, turned into this whole career. Well, I did a lot of automotive hacking for a little while. From the team that I work with, we've done everything. Satellites, cars, planes, casinos, telecom companies, everything you could think of. It's so cool to be able to see all of those different facets too. My name is Sam Curry. Uh, I've been hacking for like 10 years-ish. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and I was working at like a fast food job, like not making a lot of money. So when I was like 15, I discovered Bug Bounty. I spent like 80 hours just trying to find a bug on this one thing. And when I got paid like two weeks later, it was like 500 bucks. That was kind of my whole start with Bug Bounty. But for hacking, it's like more of like a really deep kind of passion. For pretty much like 80% of the cars, you could just take a license plate of anybody, plug it into a system, and then like remotely track that user forever, see their historic tracking history, remotely start their car, honk their car. They, they have no idea. And like, you're just kind of there behind the scenes with your phone, like, and you can do that. And you see like the car roll by, or you walk by and you see the company's name in an ad or something, you just think like, wow, I've, I've been there. You know, I've seen the inside of it. Um, it's cool, seeing what you're not supposed to is what drove me also a lot of these years. It's fascinating. It's the kind of the, the secret underground everyone thinks of. But when I was a kid, I was really into video games, played a lot of Pokemon, right? And it's basically where I learned that a video game is just a computer, and it turns out you can hack computers. So I learned how to hack video games like nine years old. Now that it's legal to do that, I can then report to a company, oh, this is the thing I did, you should probably fix that, and they'll fix it. So I'm being useful. It can be really frustrating at first because you could try a whole bunch of different types of things and they're not working, they're not working, and you're like, I know that it's definitely here because why did I get that error earlier if it's not here? And then finally you get that one string that's the correct one and you're like, yeah, I got it. And then I usually do like a Phoenix was here on the alert box, so. <laughs> when you're out hunting for, for bucks, you find something that, mm, uh, this smells vulnerable. You want to go down the route, right? You're excited, you're figuring it out, but you can't really solve the puzzle. One of the best ways to solve that is to get into a shower and get that epiphany shower moment, because that's when it's happening. Then you file a report and you're excited. You're like, wow, this is so cool. You're almost not going to want to dry yourself off. Just run to the computer and get through it. And what's going to happen after that is you're going to start to get this kind of like bounty fever. You don't know if it's going to be duplicate, which means you get nothing, or if it's gonna be triaged and you get a shitload of money. My name is Ben Tedegopor. Most people online know me as my hacker handle on the Homsec. I've been doing bug bounties for over a decade now. But when I first started doing this, there wasn't a lot of resources. There wasn't any content creators, not a lot of platforms, and I wanted to become that person. Hi, my name is Ben Tadegapur, your host and your friend Nahamsek. So let's do it. I never thought that I could look at myself at 16 and say, hey man, like you are hacking and making a living from it. It is uh, based on hunch. It's your hunch that you have, you investigate it, and then it's a rabbit hole. You can get really lost in like rabbit holes. I think sometimes I'll spend like a week and a half, two weeks where it's just like wake up, hack, bed. A lot of people are the same way where it's just like a really intense focus. You'll have like one particular target, one thing, and like you want to own it. And there's like nothing else that's like real. Like everything is just drawn out. I guess the third little hunt for me is like trying to chain like multiple books together to create like something crazy that nobody's seen. The most like previous event was like a couple months ago. Uh, I was like going down this like crazy RCE chain path on like a bunch of routers and shit. And I was just trying to like figure out how to connect these two dots for like so long. And then once I did it, it was like, oh, finally shelled the thing and that was like $200,000 cash just for that like one bug. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> you start to believe 
that the bug will pop. Like you envision the, the vulnerability and then you try to get there no matter what with different techniques or the most stupid techniques or the most complex techniques. And then sometimes you pop like some unimaginable vulnerability. It's like Neo who in the Matrix. I know on one of the programs, one of the big bugs was $150,000 for the one bug. Uh, previously, a team of nine of us cleared 750 k in a weekend. It's, it's colossal sometimes. Like we made like 800 k in like a four day span, you know, like a team of like 10 people. So it was like 80 k split. Like that first bug I found was like 10 k each person. So it was like 30 k the second time we had it, we made like 50K between like five people. It's a good amount of money. I've heard of people making like billions of dollars from it. And they're just like set, you know what I mean? I spend about five to 10% of my earnings in Vegas. I don't go and gamble it, but I do experiences. I go to a nice dinner. You know, I go to a, maybe a club. I want to see some DJ that's in, you know, in Vegas that I want to see. That allows me to do it responsibly. But I also like to save my money, so I, I go, maybe I'll spend five to 10% of it to enjoy the hard work that I've done the past two weeks. Yeah, I love that bug bounties in Vegas because it, it's kind of like a central point for everyone to meet up, right? Get to hang out with your friends and shit. Uh, Vegas also gives you like a ton of different things to do, right? Like a lot of my friends go gamble, like a lot of the bug bounty money they make. Right, they'll go like straight to get high roller tables and shit. Literally, the bug body money just goes like straight getting some form of activities, right? I've seen a friend of mine put up 5K for a blackjack hand and turn it into 50K. Seeing somebody take 5K, throw it down because they made a crap ton of money and then making another 30K from it was incredible. Like my house is paid off, ton of money in the bank, invested, like everything's chill and I feel like very secure the rest of my life. So like, it's really nice to have that foundation and I wouldn't have had it otherwise. The money is a big enabler. We all use it in different ways. Cool, helps the lifestyle, but the biggest investment is tools. It's the biggest self-fulfilling prophecy. More money, better tools, more access, more hacking, more money, better tools, more access, more hacking. I mean, we all do it because we love it. So I'm a big fan of trying to figure out your life balance because life is too short not to take care of yourself. Like, like we can either work super hard for a very, very long time and then hopefully get some retirement, you're done. For me, finding a good life balance, I'm using bug bounties as one of those things that satisfy my curiosity, but also give me a chance to earn it back on the way. A lot of my fellow compatriots in this game with like heart way way more intelligent it would take me like five or six lifetimes to be as smart as they are in the things that they're doing and so to get like this distilled espresso version of the type of work that they're doing and how they're finding it and this we share like a lot of methods and tactics and techniques and procedures and uh so it's a very collaborative uh environment like if you find the right people to interface with and uh it's it helps elevate your own game. And next thing you know, you're, you're celebrating, high-fiving because you know, you're making $30,000, $20,000, $5,000 for all I care. But you have everybody there where you can show things to each other, talk about your, you know, you can type it in, but it's just easier when I have this, right? And we get to, you know, live collaborate on something together. And the money is a very big part of it. But I think the friendships and the collaboration that come out of this, it's way beyond the money because that becomes a thing for the next event, the next event, and the next event, and the next event. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of like, really lonely feelings sometimes when you're kind of inside on your computer all the time. You've got your friends, you know, over Discord, but like to actually go rub shoulders, and, like shake hands with people, it makes everything so much more like there, you know? Like there is an industry that does exist and like there's all these people who share the same interests and like, you know, you'll make jokes that don't really hit the same way unless the other person's like a hacker. So it's nice to kind of relate and be with people. I can unequivocally say Bug Bounty has brought me the closest friendships of my entire life. We grew up together. We've been through many different life circumstances, huge different phases in our lives, but these people have always been there. We've always split stuff equally. It's never been about the money with us. These are true friends and it's, it's really a group of people that get it. We all have our own weird ways, we're all motivated by different things, but everyone gets it. It's the shared burning passion and there's, there's no friend group like it. We are at a point with bug bounties and hacking that is very, very similar to where gaming used to be five to 10 years ago. When a lot of people didn't understand streaming, people didn't understand why do you play games to make money from this. For me, like when I see the internet and I see computers and I see this, like 
I don't see like, you know, Facebook is Facebook. It's like Facebook is this place where there's like this huge battleground for every country in the world trying to steal this data. And there's this ecosystem of like vulnerability brokers and data brokers and access control, so, you know, this huge world, right? When you participate in that and you become like someone who can contribute to this world, you know, like people say like cyber arms dealer or things like that, but like you're participating in what is like this global battleground for like everything, right? You are really are the master of your own destiny and you know, it's, it's a meritocracy. There's something here for everybody. It's the, it's the best job anybody could ever ask for.